Good morning. Happy Friday and welcome to The Daily Huddle. My name is Sorel Ketan. I'm the co-founder of The Daily Huddle, along with my business partner, Giovanni Gonzalez, who's not here, who may be joining us. Either way, I love you. He loves you more. We're here on The Daily Huddle to empower entrepreneurs and empower others with uh, guests who come because they are entrepreneurs, but first, they are human beings. Uh, leaving us entrepreneurs with uh, a window to see that however you are as a human being, you can be successful as an entrepreneur. And Me Too Charles, who is my guest this morning, is going to share her success, her journey, and her life with us, just to be that kind of icon. So uh, Me Too, thank you for being here. I have a question for you. Yes. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a man who kept walking around with a rabbit on his head. Why is that? I'm not sure. Hmm. <laughs> he wanted a head full of hair. <laughs> That's a good one. I wonder who that man was. Are you present? And whether you are or not, the following questions are going to generate you being present. Michelle, good morning. What time is it, Michelle? And who are you going to hug today? Um. Oh, the time is now. Right now, the only time we have. And today I'm going to hug someone at the Triumph dealership because I'm going to be going there to do a live stream. Mm. Let's do that. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, and welcome to the Daily Huddle. Rashida Wright, how are you? And what are you grateful for? Oh, oh, I am. Oh, my goodness. I am blessed and grateful, grateful for life and for life itself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you going to hug today? Oh, who I'm going to hug today? I already hugged my tree. And I'm going to hug my new grandson. He's going to be one week old today. Oh, my God. How time flies. Can you imagine? In two weeks, he'll be two weeks old. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you grateful for, Rashida? Oh, I am grateful for life itself. Trust me, one day more to my calendar. Yes, I'm grateful. And by the way, my grandson was born on my birthday. And last week, Friday was my birthday. Oh, That's happy belated birthday. A, a new grandson. <laughs> and he was my uh, my birthday present. Oh, I'm so oh grateful Oh, my for God. That. Trust me. <laughs> How blessed you are indeed. Rashida, thank you for being here. Thank you for your energy. And thank you for providing the listening for this conversation to happen. I prepped our guest, so I will ask her the last question. <laughs> Me too. Where are you? I am here. <laughs> <laughs> right where you're supposed to be, indeed. Where Let I'm me take a moment and introduce you to the world. This is my friend, Ermit Shal, and uh, we call her Me Too, affectionately. Uh, she's an entrepreneur. She's a singer. She's a songwriter. She's an entertainer. She's a mom. And she was born Hermite Villers. She grew up in Haiti and left and came to the U.S. at the age of 21. She has a passion for music, a passion for business, and a passion for life. So today you get to meet my friend, Me Too, and who's going to share her passion with you with the intention of infecting you with her contagious passion and her contagious life. Me too, good morning. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. Good morning, the Daily Huddle crew and the world. 
Thank you, Soel, for having me. I know you always try to put me in different things, and I am grateful for that because I can go sit in a corner sometimes and not, you know, do what I'm supposed to be doing. So I thank you for that. You know, funny people would look at you, listen to you, that never think that you <laughs> are the type that would just go sit in a corner, you know? Uh, uh, <laughs> at any rate, I am glad you came out of that corner to share your time and your voice with us today. I won't ask you to sing. <laughs> 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 but I will ask you this. Both you and I are from Haiti. Mm -hmm. And there's something that happens to people who emigrate, who leave their home country to come live in another country. I want to hear from you. What was it like leaving Haiti at the age of 21? And how has migrating and leaving home impacted you so what was it like leaving Haiti it was definitely emotional but you know growing up it's always everybody's dream to either vacation or move to the U.S. at some point because we want to see what it's like outside of Haiti um, definitely a culture shock when I first came here but as soon as I touched the soil here I was definitely grateful for the opportunity to come here. It's been great uh, since I got to the US and it's helped me um, fulfill certain dreams that I've always had growing up, such as being an entrepreneur and having the tools here to help me in my be successful in my journey. Mm. And so you left at the age of 21 if there's anything about your life in Haiti or about Haiti itself that you miss, what is that? I do miss being able to just get up and go hang out with my friends. <laughs> but, you know, at that age, you didn't have a whole lot on your plate. So it's a, it was a different life at the time. Um, I do miss the community. Uh but mainly the weather. <laughs> Especially on a day like today, right? Yes, exactly. 33 degrees outside. Let yes. the world know it's probably 86 degrees in Haiti. <laughs> most likely, most likely. <laughs> now, you said that coming to the States really made a big difference in your life. It equipped you with tools and opportunities that you needed to live the life that you're living now. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, the impact. Like, how has being an immigrant in the States shaped you? It, I have to say that it really helped me move forward in my dreams. Again, being an entrepreneur, I've, I started... I had a business mind since I was a little girl um, growing up in Haiti. I would always be hustling, as we could say. Um, I would borrow money from my parents to start something, and then I would pay back and then just continue my little business. Sometimes it was selling soft drinks, um, making little patties to go sell to the men who were playing bingo and all that stuff to stop making money. So when I migrated here, of course I started working first, but my dream was always to have my own business. And there are so many opportunities that I feel like a lot of people who grew up and live here do not realize that are available to them. Um, but we also, not everybody has the mindset of taking on the, the risk, I guess, as a as an entrepreneur, um, the loans, the um, the clientele, the the classes that are available to you to make your dreams come true, 
uh, without having to sell your soul sometimes. I mean, maybe there are certain things you might need to sell your soul for, but uh, just basic stuff. Um, it's It's been great having the opportunity to get the resources that are out here in this country that may have been a little bit more difficult back home to uh, to fulfill those dreams. Yeah, so you are now an entrepreneur and you run a very successful business a hair salon and uh i'd love for you to take a moment and trace the journey what sparked the idea of owning building and creating a, a hair salon and what challenges did you go through and where are you now with that business i started as a hairstylist i worked for someone um, for nine years, my goal, and I remember telling him in the interview when he was hiring me, my goal was to have my own salon within 10 years. And a few years later, um, I didn't make it to the 10 year mark. It was nine years and I was able to open my own. Um, it was definitely scary because you taking that big step and you will always think like what if it doesn't work out but I don't like to enter into anything with that mindset but in the back of your head sometimes you're like what if but I am that person I like to have worst case scenario plans um, and I know a lot of times they say when you enter in business it's all in you should not think about plan b but I am that person because I feel like if anything were ever to happen the fall hurts less when you have the worst case scenario because you are already prepared for the, you know, for what's to come. But <clears throat> I started very small in a small suite and eventually I grew up within a few months, I realized I can grow and I can do this. So I bet on myself and took the chance, grew into three suites at that point and within three years, I said, I need more space again. So I grew and got a storefront and I have other people working for me. And it's been, it's been an amazing journey. It comes with challenges, of course, because, you know, you always, you have to always stay ahead of the game to continue the success. Um, you can't afford to just sit back and be like, well, I've, reached wherever I needed to. And I don't think really there's ever a tipping point, not tipping point, but like a final destination truly, because whenever you get to the final destination, you set new goals. Um, so my goal is to always set new goals, uh, but I have um, other people working and I, I want to continue growing my empire. Man, so uh, you, you, appropriately, you use the word empire, right? Yes. <laughs> so impress me to tell tell us uh, right now, uh, how many employees do you have? How many partners do you have in the business? I currently have two employees only because I am re rearranging the way I do business because before I did have employees. Now, my goal is to have more contractors uh, because I would like to empower people to be independent. So instead of working for me, you will be working with me by my side, being an entrepreneur yourself. Mm, and your goal is to have how many contractors? Uh, at, at, the, at the moment, the space can hold seven more people, well, seven people um, plus myself, comfortably. Yeah. So you spent nine years working for someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, you gave yourself a 10 year goal, but you made it a nine. You mustered up the courage to open up your own business. Very quickly, you discovered that, you know, gosh, I can do this. Uh, okay. What is it about your craft that actually keeps your clients coming back? I think it's a whole package because I care about my clients, not just the money that they're bringing me, not just, you know, the business. But once you walk through the door, I want you to feel at home and I want you to feel comfortable. I want you to feel like it's family 
um, like you have support. So you don't come here just to get your hair done and get beautified. You come here to, this is your safe haven, basically. When you come here, you can let it all out. Uh, they say, they joke about this a lot, but I am truly like a therapist for them um, <laughs> and the best friend and everything else that they need me to be in that moment, the two hours that you spend here or however much time you have with me, it's all about you and my focus is you. Um, so I think that's what keeps them coming because they don't feel just like a number. They feel seen, heard, and taken care of. You do love your clients, don't you? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. So uh, when you first started with the person you worked for as a hairdresser, did the profession hairdresser find you or did you go after it? See, uh, a lot of times people are thinking, gosh, I want to be in business, but I don't know what business to start. I actually don't know what my passion is and what will keep me occupied and interested for a long time. How did you choose that space? Personally, I feel like hospitality has been calling me my whole life because even as a young girl, I always like to provide for people. And everything that I've done always involved direct contact with my customers, with my clients. Um, I want to be able to be there and talk to you and be personal. That's always been the line of work. Even before hairstyling, I was always a waitress, a bartender. Everything that involved me being personal with people, I think I love that. I like the human contact, I guess. Um, so I, 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 I didn't think uh, salon was going to be the major business that I would have had because I tried to run away from it, believe it or not. It kept calling my name, but I was like, no, nah, they're not going to take me seriously. I mean, we're just it, even still... Even owning this, I people walk in and still think, oh, you're just doing this for, for, you know, until whatever, until the next best thing. And because unfortunately, the trades, a lot of people don't take them seriously. If you don't go to a four-year college, a lot of times people don't think, you know, it's a serious line of work. So it took me a long time to realize and also accept that this is my calling. This is what I'm supposed to be doing, touching people's heart and uh, beauty at the outside and the inside. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. A friend of mine actually convinced me, I would say, that that's where I'm supposed to be. He said, you are good at this. You keep chasing other things that you end up saying you don't like, you don't care for, but yet you are still chasing them because you think that's what you're supposed to be doing per society standard. But this has been calling you since you were younger. You have all you grew up braiding people's hair, um, doing their makeup. Even when I was in Haiti, when I would have shows, I would still do everybody's makeup be before we get on stage. And it's always been a passion, but I kept denying myself the opportunity to be happy and help others at the same time. So after he talked to me, I decided, okay, I'm going to pursue this. And that's when I started going to school for um, cosmetology. And by the time I finished and started working for somebody, I realized, yes, what took me so long to come around? And then of course, you know, the dream kind of sparkled again. All right, so you're going to own a hair salon. That's going to be the business. That's going to be your forever business. So this is your forever business and your forever expression. So uh, given what you've gone through, including struggling, accepting the fact that this is your calling, uh, what, what are you most proud of? 
I am definitely proud of my achievement and also being a good example for women, especially um, immigrant women, for mothers as well, because you nothing is going to come easy. You're always going to find the challenges, but you always have to look past those. Um, so being a, a Black Haitian entrepreneur, mom, I am very proud of those titles. I wear many hats, but those are the ones that I am very grateful and proud of. And speaking of the mother title, <laughs> um, I remember in my own life, making the transition to being an entrepreneur, I, I always felt as if, oh my God, am I actually going to have the time in the world to do all the things I need to do and also do the things I like and want? Uh, tell us, how do you create balance in your life if there's such a thing? At times, you have to pull back on certain things, unfortunately, because like um like you introduced me earlier i'm also an artist i sing i entertain i am also a promoter if you will cuz i'm the music business aspect of my life i haven't talked about that part yet i am a singer i also manage the band and i also book the band i look for i find all the contracts that uh, the parties that we go play at, the shows that we go play at. We, I am the person who goes out and find those things and sign the contracts and make sure that the band member is all ready to go. Um, and then, like you said, I'm also a mother and you kind of have to create that balance because it's not going to come find you. You're going to have to, sometimes you're going to have to see what you need to prioritize at the time. And certain things, unfortunately, at times will take a seat back. Right now, I am kind of taking a break from the music to be full force in it. I am performing um, more as a hired band rather than me putting shows together because that that is a whole other thing, as you know, because you I know you put events together. There's a lot more involved rather than just somebody call you and say, hey, I need you to play at my party on this date, that date. OK, I got the band ready. We're ready to go. And I don't have to worry about the rest of the, the stuff. So at, the, at this moment, towards the end of the year, usually I try to sit back as an entrepreneur on that end and just let people hire me for parties so it's easier so it that's the balance for me because I have to fully be at the salon because it's a very, very busy season. And my children also have sports that I have to take them to. So it's like... How you old are your children? They are 13 and 8. <laughs> so you have two. And yeah, two boys. Mother, singer, songwriter, promoter band leader <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> entrepreneur owning a business and a hairdresser you have several friends here and uh uh ronald is here he has a question to ask you oh okay ronald why don't you ask your question out loud hey 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 this is my favorite artist <laughs> i just i just happened to, to get get online so always tell me to that uh, Hollywood is waiting so yes you do <laughs> so uh, I was just wondering when is a single is coming out we are planning to come out with something by summer next year and of course we sing mainly for Haiti so that song is about Haiti and all the stuff that is happening right now um but we do have two songs out there already. We have Creole Cri Creole on YouTube. And we also have Aiti Te Glisse. If you just search for me to Charles, you'll be able to find those songs. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, everyone is your friend and your BFF here. So they're going to come up with questions to ask you to get a little piece of you. But I want to know. If uh, you were going to give advice to a woman 
or man who may be in the position you were as you emigrated, thinking about starting a business and running and growing one, what advice would you give a an aspiring entrepreneur? I would say talk to the people who have done it before because they've made their fair share of mistakes, right? You can learn from them. Don't be afraid to ask. I always say, I always tell people, I ask with knowing that the answer might be 50-50, yes, no, but I'm prepared for whatever it is because a lot of times we want to do certain things, but we're afraid to ask. Um, always ask questions set a goal, talk to the people who did it before you because they always have something to offer you in terms of success, being successful in your in your path. Um, and pretty much believe in yourself, bet on yourself and believe in yourself. Yeah. And uh, as someone who is continually betting on yourself and believing in yourself, if you were to paint a picture of Aramid's hair salons, say five years from now, what mm -hmm. do you see? I see a big building with probably at least 20 chairs and all of them are entrepreneurs for themselves. They work for themselves. They're just under my roof with my guidance. Um, and also with the brand being pretty much known everywhere, um, globally, hopefully. Um, at least that's that's it for now. <laughs> that's it for now. <laughs> yes. Building 20 chairs filled <laughs> with entrepreneurs who you are grooming and shaping and helping to grow their own businesses under your roof. Uh, I love that. That's the least, but yeah. it can change and be bigger. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I told you I had a surprise question for you at the end. Right? Ooh, all right. I'm ready. So if there's one thing that people would never guess or fathom about you, what is that? Probably that I live life out loud and... I am very proud of who I am, where I come from, um, mainly the Haitian part, but I'm also a non-monogamous that a lot of people would have never guessed, maybe, um, that I do talk about that a lot uh, because I'm all about giving information to the world and also letting people know that it's okay to step outside the line that society has drawn for us and that it's okay to live your life the way you see fit, not the way tell somebody tells you that it's okay to do. Thank you for sharing yourself with us. The daily huddle goes by really fast. We have two minutes left. So oh, wow. We're just going to close it out that way. But before we close it out, uh, if you wanted to say one last thing to female entrepreneurs and to entrepreneurs in general, what would you say? I would say wake up and go after it. Don't let anything get in your way because there will be a lot of things that will get in your way. Sometimes you will need a break. You will need to breathe. Take that moment, breathe, and then get back up and keep going. And that's what you've done, haven't you? Yes, because Thank there you. will be moments where you will need that breath. You, It's okay. You, you get up, you get your breath, and then you keep it moving. Yeah. So thank you for being resilient. Thank you for being a visionary. Thank you for being an icon for what it is to be a Haitian woman doing her thing. Thank you so much to the Daily Huddle for having me and hosting me. I am, again, grateful to be on your platform. And thank you so much, Sorel, for always uh, trying to bring out different aspects of me to the community and other communities. All of you people are beautiful. And let's get this day going. Let's do that. And we'll end today's huddle 
the same way we always do, not because we want to be repetitive, but because we want you and us to really get that life can be the kind of love, life that you live, simply being loving. We have eight tenets. There are love. Laugh out loud. You know, you could be sad. You could mope, be moping around the moment you fake a laugh. You go, <laughs> you know, even a fake life, a fake laugh triggers something internally that gets you to be in this moment just the way you say you are. And as you trigger that big laugh, you can say, I am happy. I am loving. I'm going to feed this body what I need to feed it. Eat mostly plant-based. Sleep at least seven hours, if not eight. Giovanni wants to sleep 10 hours. Right, Gio? <laughs> and uh, sleep, rest, give of yourself, give of your things. Be generous. And last but not least, move your body every day. And if you're ever thinking that you're right about something, check your assumptions. You may discover something unexpected. So go for it. Live, laugh out loud. And uh, tune in for the Daily Huddle on a daily basis. Monday through Friday, we'll be here. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Love you all. Hello, guys. One love. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you.